एवरीवन वेलकम टू गाइडिंग वॉइस पॉडकास्ट सीरीज द गाइडिंग वॉइस फॉर अ बेटर फ्यूचर दिस पॉडकास्ट इज टू हेल्प स्टूडेंट्स एंड यंग प्रोफेशनल्स टू शेप देयर कैरियर्स थैंक यू फॉर ट्यूनिंग इन दिस इज नवीन एंड आई एम विद माय कोहोस्ट सुधाकर डियर लिसनर्स इन दिस एपिसोड वी वांट टू कवर अ टॉपिक रिलेटेड टू एल एंड डी दैट इज लर्निंग एंड डेवलपमेंट एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द रोल ऑफ एल एंड डी प्रोफेशनल्स इन टुडेस वर्क कॉन्टेक्स्ट and we are pleased to welcome kavita to our show today to have a conversation around the same kavita rao is a medical psychiatrist by qualification armed with a hr specialization from california university kavita is the ceo of learners route an award winning knowledge organization specializing in talent management initiatives training assessment projects across corporate houses in india and abroad learners route partners with fmcg it manufacturing educational and consulting gen for their talent development solution in her illustrious professional journey kavita has won numerous accolades including honorary doctoral degree in 2019 times now femina exemplary women leader awardee in 2018 corporate diva title winner in 2017 headed one of india's top 100 talented training and development organizations in 2016 and asia pacific award winner for organization development in 2015 along with this spirituality and silence are kavita's part time activities kavita welcome again to the guiding voice podcast series happy to have you here today it's a complete pleasure both navin and sudhakar firstly even before i get started i must uh, thank the guiding voice team and both of you for the value you add to the young professionals I have heard about your platform from some of our, my own team members and young professionals we have been interviewing of late. I guess this is something that a lot of people look up to for their own professional guidance. So thank you guiding voice team. Thank you Kavita and it's all because of support from people like you we are able to make a mark and definitely we are going to create a legacy for ourselves in the near future. Yeah, uh, I'm a beneficiary as well. Okay Kavita let us explore the essential part of any human being that is continuous learning and development for the benefit of everyone let us start from the beginning okay so how is adult learning different from regular learning that is the learning that we receive in schools and colleges that's an interesting question sudhakar Learning is something that we do sometimes consciously most of the time very subconsciously it keeps happening for all of us the beauty of learning is that it does not differentiate between class it does not differentiate race age gender all of us have opportunities to learn and each of us process information differently so the uh, concept of learning and development it is also recently people have started rechristening this in corporates as learning and growth the only way growth happens is uh, by continuous learning and conscious learning as well so there are two kinds of uh, learning platforms one till you start your uh, you know formal work life which is the formal education and second uh, when you start the work life there is a different style in which people are introduced to learning which is known as the adult learning methodology mm-hmm. the difference is between the push and pull one is a push wherein we give you a knowledge in in a formal education and adult learning is a pull technology and uh, what happens in a formal education there's a direct involvement of a teacher but if you see an adult learning methodology you need not necessarily have an active teacher learning happens through multiple sources and one is knowledge based other is skill and application based that essentially is the difference great thank you we all typically go through this formal education process through schools and colleges where the 
teacher actually provides us this push methodology where we acquire knowledge in this adult learning phase what are your core responsibilities as a learning and development professional kavita um when you are dealing with adults who are well read well traveled these people cognitively process information a lot differently one of the key responsibility as an learning and development professional is for you to assume that you are starting off with an already cognitively active individual so it must be experience based so adult learning is largely experience based use their own experiences which is why game based learning simulations are taking a lot of precedence these days you look at you help people go through an experience and most adults have an ability to process that experience reflect upon it ponder over it and take their own learning out of the an experience sudhakar you might have a different learning that is relevant to your context well i will have a different learning that is relevant to my context and that's the beauty of adult learning that's where corporates significantly invest all their efforts on for people to learn from their own life experiences and apply that towards their own professional growth so kavita are there any prerequisites or basic qualifications certifications required for getting into this domain for example bed is a must for one to become a teacher especially in government sector like any other professional career path that you may take learning and development by itself uh, is can be a very demanding aspect of human resources as well when we talk of human resources we are talking of hiring maintaining and also growth of every individual into leadership path and learning and development plays a significant uh, role so in terms of qualification mm-hmm. there are two paths when we are talking of learning and development professional so for all the young professionals listening to you there are two aspects and you may want to choose which are you naturally inclined towards one is a training aspect of it wherein you are part of the organizing committee you are the one who is uh, designing and creating an organization learning architecture etc mm-hmm. the second big wing is the trainer community which which are the people who are imparting this knowledge people who are uh, sharing uh, what they know helping you crystallize all of this so there's a training person there's a trainer also into training division a good qualification we can look at is ideally a masters degree and mba is also a preferred uh, choice and if you are uh, having any industry specific uh, preferences an engineering degree with an mba can add a lot of value because a good learning and development person needs to understand the nuances of uh, how an organization works uh, pretty deeply to be able to build the learning architecture so ideally we'd like a masters degree in hr and mba uh, and and if, if for the operations side of it a graduation should be good enough mm-hmm. so for one to be at a leadership level probably having a technical degree coupled with mba might help it certainly will it certainly is an uh, advantage because you will be able to speak their language one but this is only a gating criteria uh, navin mm-hmm. once you enter the organization just like uh, you know you keep upgrading yourself into a lot of these you know latest technologies learning and development is no different there are a number of certifications required there is a lot of master classes that you yourself need to attend to be able to also cascade that for your organization so the gating criteria is a, a masters degree an mba or an engineering plus an mba would be a good uh, starting point but after you get it it is no different from any technical person's life you have to constantly keep upgrading yourself to the latest learning methodologies Yeah absolutely agree on that point being a trainer we have to be well versed with what's happening and at the same time keep abreast of what's happening 
I think this clarifies. Yes. So Kavita, coming to the professional development, having attended multiple professional development trainings throughout my career so far, most of these uh, development training happens through experiential learning, and you also. covered a little bit about gaming part of it right so can you throw some light on experiential learning and highlight a few of its advantages i would love to do that because that's uh, something that we do like the back of our hand mm-hmm. now when we talk of experiential learning uh, if i were to ask you you know navin tell me how when is it that the food does not get uh, burnt you will be able to recall your experience of when the food got burnt and tell you what i should do and i should not do if i were to ask you what will happen if i add extra water to uh, you know uh, plants you will uh, think of your own experience and then say yeah yeah you can go ahead and add but the plant can die very soon so our experiences are our best teachers if you look at ancient wisdom in india also the way gurukul system was running was largely through experience and skill based learning we have only repackaged it because that's a formidable way of learning now uh, when we say experiential or adult learning methodology in an organization what we simply mean is put the participants through a probable situation that they might encounter as uh, emerging leaders put them through a case scenario which is like which they are likely to encounter the logic behind that is that you can't learn to fight or uh, shoot a, a rifle in the battleground you must have practiced it enough in peace time so that you know what to do when you are in a crisis and that's the experiential learning part it helps you go through an experience reflect upon it take your learning so that tomorrow when you actually face a situation like this you are better equipped to handle as an emerging leader i think you have covered it very well talking about ancient uh, way of learning and all and also it strikes a chord in terms of uh, why mbas are successful compared to rest of the post graduates because mba students get an opportunity to work on case studies and all so which means they're passing through that phase before actually getting into the work mode am i right that's right so we are a sum total of all the experience and feedback that we have got what makes one person better than the other or have an edge over the others is the sum total of all your experiences plus the feedback that you have got and in a nutshell that is what learning and development actually capitalizes on or uses as one of its strongest tool experience and feedback <laughs> yeah this is fabulous thanks kavita kavita you already touched upon the experiential learning gaming based learning opportunities when we go through these workshops we typically see that you know activity based scenarios are given and they are very popular and that makes this learning experience little more engaging little more different and also this helps in reinforcing the learning in these participants right so how can we create or simulate these activities in the digital world especially in these global organizations or in these unprecedented times where you know pulling the participants into one single room might be practically little difficult right so in these type of uh, situations if we can recreate this or simulate this in digital world the reach might be more might be more and also the spread will also be more absolutely you know uh, what is um, interesting is uh, how adaptable we as human beings are and if you were to ask me in uh, january of this year kavita can we do this 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 virtually i would have hesitated a little but come april 1 we are seamlessly running most of what we used to do in class virtually as well and i'm sure it is true of everybody else and how you're running your business 
70 to 80 percent of all what you used to do with those huge infrastructure that we used to have is still happening. Businesses are still having targets and they are able to meet it. And that's true with the learning as well. You know, uh, even uh, learning and development professionals have aced up their game, just like how teachers today have learned and able to manage the, uh, to keep the education front running. Corporate learning is also thriving right now. And uh, one of the reasons it is happening is because what was not uh, considered as an option uh, like online simulations, the same simulation we've converted into online. The gaming part is run into online. So we are able to continue the learning journey and the platform is just a means for us. The second important thing that any learning and development professional needs to be very alert to is that the participants must have a desire for this particular talk. And that's the difference between formal education and adult learning. You must have a natural gravity towards that topic and, and the world has enough information for you to explore and exploit. I'll uh, like to uh, talk about some of the critical competencies if any of your uh, listeners are looking at entering into a learning and development field. Mm -hmm. That would be great. In most of the other roles that you would engage in, you have a sense of an accomplishment about what you are able to do. But the learning and development professional, the more you are experienced, the more you will realize how less we actually know. And that's the beauty of this particular role, so to say. So if you are exploring this, some of the most important things that you may want to consider is you must have great listening skills. When we say listening, listening and observing because you need to be able to read between the lines of what is said and what is meant to build a learning architecture for your organization. You need to be a good divergent thinker somebody who is able to explore multiple possibilities to drive across a learning point. At the same time, it's a paradox that a good learning and development professional should also be a convergent thinker. Their ability to filter all of what is possible and crystallize it to the top two or three things that, you know, every professional needs to have in their path to leadership. So listening, divergent thinking, convergent thinking and being resourceful. If you have a flair for all of these, then I think you will find learning and development as one of uh, very enriching uh, roles in your own uh, career path. Kavita, I think these are great tips, adapting these listening skills and talking about uh, being knowledgeable and at the same time demonstrating convergent and divergent thinking. So definitely those who are aspiring to get into these roles will be helpful. Mm -hmm. Kavita, let me flip the coin and talk from the participant perspective. So me undergoing similar experience like say 10, 11 years ago when I was nominated for one of the trainings, I have attended the training for the namesake. So on the other side, some employees are very passionate about attending trainings. So, being a participant, what do you think should be the attitude of an employee as a learner in order to make effective utilization of the training? That's actually a, a million dollar question and I like it because I have been on this side of the table and on that side of the table myself. <laughs> so here is uh, my take on that, Naveen. You know, when you see a glass, it's either half full or half empty, depending on how you would like to see life uh, through your lenses, right? Um, there are opportunities and it's like that uh, a story where a man was sent to Africa and, you know, to sell shoes. One person came back saying, you know, it's impossible. Nobody wears shoes, so nothing can be sold there. Well, and all of us would have heard that uh, the other person came back saying nobody wears shoes. So that's a great possibility to put up our factory, shoe factory out in Africa. Learning is also like that. There is an opportunity available. 
and as a participant regardless of uh, whether you are taking part in a formal learning experience or an informal learning experience our ability to be open minded to see what else can i learn not what can i because in today's digital world i think everything is available at the click of a button but how a, my open mindedness is one of my key gate openers to learning the second big quality as a participant is also to be able to process that information and see where can i apply just picking up information if you are attending it's going to be a waste of your time but spending a few moments to see where can i apply i remember very beautiful wisdom from our own scriptures which says yato hasta tato drishti yato drishti tato manah yato manah tato bhava which simply means that where your hands are your eto hasta tato drishti your eyes should be there where your eyes are eto drishti tato manaha that's where your heart is so if your involvement has a direct correlation with your learning and uh, that's why corporates are spending a lot of time in uh, doing a need analysis as well to find out what is it that you want to learn as participant i might think that the sun moon and the stars are required but if you are saying that i need only a b c then corporates are getting specific to give you the experience that you are seeking and that's where uh, there is a significant difference and uh, we are no longer learning and development we are learning and growth now kavita you mentioned about uh, uh, glass being half full yeah. and uh, our glass being half empty i came across a new uh, statement what one has quoted is even if irrespective of the glass is full empty or half empty it is refillable i think that is quite applicable to our learning and development domain especially when it comes to unlearning and relearning things right absolutely i think it will be good for you to start off with that <laughs> sure thanks thanks kavita kavita as part of uh, working in an organization you know you go through many training sessions learning opportunities like navin mentioned some by your interest some because of nomination what are some of the tips that you would give to retain the knowledge and learnings and use them effectively in personal or professional life this is something that i get asked very often and uh, thanks for bringing this up as well and i think this would be applicable for people going through both corporate learning and also the formal education i'd like to start off with one of the tips which is very simple which our grandmothers and mothers used to say when we were growing up remember they would say that why don't you write and see and you will be able to remember while you are going through any experience at the end of it if you can scribble down some of your key learnings and uh, shove it up somewhere you know this sits in your subconscious significantly the other good way of crystallizing all what you have gone through is having active discussions my friends if you are able to discuss what you have learned and share then our mind has a unique way of registering it in our subconscious and it can pull up the learning when you actually require it the third big way and corporates use it very very effectively is immediately after any kind of a learning session put us through an experience where it you actually have to try out what you have learned some of us are successful some of us are not and that is not the big deal the big deal is helping you process all what you have learned to see how it actually applies in your day to day transactions and uh, what it uh, means to each one of us how it's benefited each one of us so these are some of the critical things one noting down in your own words what you have learned is the first one the second one is having active discussions around it and the organization can facilitate that they do it in the form of whatsapp groups and your internal chat boxes etc and the third significant way is get into a project within 3 to 6 months of having learned a new skill where you can actually apply and that's the path to growth i think these are all wonderful tip kavita any personal tips that you like to share with our listeners 
in order to improve productivity or in order to be successful in life whatever you think will be beneficial to our listeners i will uh, give one generic and one very specific to learning and development uh, professionals one generic one is there is no alternate to discipline regardless of what stage of career path you are on and what level of leadership you are at there is no alternate to discipline that would be the brahmastra or the you know gayatri mantra of success i would say the second for learning and development professionals in specific your ability to constantly be resourceful and divergent in the in your approach to building an organization learning architecture and um, your level of depth that you build in understanding the businesses that you support these are the two strong pillars on which your entire learning journey is dependent on and that's a huge task which requires again discipline so this this would be my uh, two cents advice to young professionals who would be entering into this line i think those are fantastic advice thank you thank you kavita for your time and sharing your insights in this important learning and development domain mm-hmm. it was indeed a great conversation to know more about the role of lnd professionals i think the learning department is the backbone of building talent across the levels in any organization so thank you very much for your time thank you for the value you have been adding to a number of professionals including me and uh, navin and sudhakar i would be happy to add value to any of your, the young uh, listeners who may have any questions after this podcast as well so it's been a pleasure definitely kavita we are going to publish your contact details in the episode description which our audience may tune in and definitely i am expecting more and more people will reach out to you and thank you for offering help to our audience dear listeners to know more about our speaker and the content visit or follow us on social media or feel free to email us and we will be happy to share further details with you all right It brings us to the trivia segment of today's episode and today's trivia is about professional development. So folks, here are a few facts around professional development as per Tiny Pulse Institute's research. The first fact is about 75% of millennials would consider leaving their job in case if they don't see options for professional development. That's scary. And number 2 Over 1 in 4 employees say that they don't have the tools to be successful in their role. And number 3, 3 in 4 employees do not feel like they have opportunities for professional growth. So I think these are very crucial and critical numbers which organizations can focus on and they clearly emphasize the need for professional development. Interesting, isn't it? If you would like to share any trivias please feel free to share them through email and our email address is the guiding voice for you at the rate @gmail.com or sms us or text us at india number 9494587187 we will not only share best trivias in future episodes we will also announce your names again We are open for suggestions on topics that you would like to hear from us through our email address. Our email address is the guiding voice number 4 letter u at the rate gmail.com. You may also WhatsApp us on our India number 9494587187. Like our page on Facebook facebook.com/the guiding voice number 4 letter u or follow us on twitter twitter.com/guidingvoice to stay tuned about our future episodes we are also available on instagram as the guiding voice for you also please subscribe to our youtube channel youtube.com/c/the guiding voice there is more in store until next time have a wonderful time thank you for listening take care and be safe Thank you.